many, many years ago at a horse sale in Atlanta, Georgia. And I could tell right off that he was a man of great character. And I didn't appreciate it at the time, but years later, looking back on some of the people that I had known and met, the thing that impressed me about him and still impresses me today was the fact that he spent time mentoring a lot of young men. Uh, they was always around him, they loved him, and you could see that. You could see it that in his, his life. Sweet by and by, we're good and cheap. Last night as I lay on the prairie, I gazed at the stars and sky. I wondered if that cowboy would drift to that sweet by Salty information that I'd like to pass along. 
You go out to a racetrack or some fancy riding school and what you'll find them riding there is horses as a rule. You'll find them wrapped in blankets when they break a little sweat and bedded in warm stables so they don't get cold or wet. Their saddle is a postage stamp. They're combed and curried slick. Their riders bobbled up and down like monkeys on a stick. Them pretty tricks are horses, son, but that there ain't the word that we used to call them shaggies if we rode behind the herd. They might not be too pretty, but they stayed outside at night. They maybe weighed 900 pounds, all guts and dynamite. They took you where you had to go and always brought you back without no fancy rations that you purchased in a sack. They looked all day on nothing but your two hands full of grass. On a stepson full of water, they could climb a mountain pass. They swim you through the rivers and plow you through the sand, you and your heavy saddle, till they learned to understand which end of the cows the tail was on. So all you had to do was set up in the saddle while they did the cow work too. Sometimes they sort of dodged your rope, sometimes they bucked you high, but they were sure the apple of the old time cowman's eye. Even stable pampered critters may be horses sure enough, but them old cow range horses, they was born to take it rough. And that's the way they took it till they earned a tougher name and these here hand-fed critters all so delicate and tame. So you can have your horses with their highfalutin gloss. I'll take four-legged rawhide, or in other words, a horse. We're here to talk about Mr. Mack. I, th I think I first sat on a horse that belonged to Mack Abercrombie 60 years ago and that would have been in 1951, and Claude was Prince. I've got a picture. Uh, Claude at the reunion told me I was Prince. I last saw Mr. Mac Claude Abercrombie Sr. when he was 90 years of age in May of 1994. It was out at the Garden Terrace. Everyone who came into that room sensed the presence that was a mix of quiet dignity and character. Um, the afternoon sunlight fell across the foot of his bed. And I got ready to go, and then he spoke first, and he said, I won't be here when you get back. And as I prepared to get off the edge of his bed and let go of that big hand, he caught my arm with his other hand with that amazingly strong grip and said, I'll save a good one for you. And if you were raised by Mac Abercrombie in his barn, as were hundreds of other youngsters, many here tonight, you knew that a good one meant a good horse. Uh, he had said that to me for 40 years, and my recollection is that the tears burned the back of my throat as I left that room in Douglas County. It would never be the same place again for me. Uh, it was only in the last five years that I realized that uh, Mr. Mack had that kind of relationship, not just with me, but with five generations of young people in Douglas County. You see, he threw a very big loop with his life, positively influencing thousands, maybe even tens of thousands, we may not know each other as we lived in different eras. The pre bulk war barn where the historical society is now, the big barn where the prison is now, and the Timber Ridge barn, but Mac Abercrombie knew us all. He knew each and every one. Why, Mac, you 